Pues aquí estamos eh, en este especial eh, Keroxen, en el que estamos emitiendo parte de la programación de, de este festival que se está celebrando ahora mismo en Tenerife y del que hoy damos buena cuenta de las actividades que sucedieron el pasado 21 de noviembre en, en, en La Laguna. Y en este caso eh, tenemos con nosotros a Bárbara Ellison, que es una artista eh, sonora y multidisciplinar y con quien vamos a hablar en inglés. Um, acerca de, de este concierto que escucharemos a continuación de la, de la entrevista y acerca de su trabajo que es eh, bastante, bueno, es muy interesante. Así que nada, sin más, eh, cambio al inglés y, y, y hablamos con Bárbara. Hello Bárbara, how are you? I'm very well and thank you for this interview. Thank you. Um, we are so happy to, to, to have you here because uh, it's always good to... to to um, being able to broadcast a concert that is already happening, but it's even better if we, if, if, if we can have you, you the artist, to, to walk us through a little bit about uh, what happened um, uh, on, on that day, on the 21st of November in the Ketoxen Festival. But first of all, I would like to ask you about exactly that, because uh, since we have this uh, COVID uh, situation and it's really hard to... To, to perform live and to, to mm -hmm. go around making gigs. I mean, maybe the first question one asks is how, how it has been this experience of, of going to the Canary Islands in the middle of this mess and, and performing on a festival such as uh, Keroxen. Well, you know, it's been amazing for us because um, we have been isolated in the Netherlands, relatively isolated, since March. We haven't left the Netherlands since lockdown. And uh, that's me and Francisco. And we were originally in, supposed to be in the US in March for four months for gigs and a tour and residency. And we, we arrived in March in the US and we had to return 10 days later. Mm. And then since then, we've been in the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, it's been, pretty, it's been pretty hardcore there. So mm. everything has been canceled. So it was amazing when this invite came uh, for Karaksen and it seemed like it was going to happen and uh, we managed to get the test PCR COVID test done it was all quite stressful up to the point where we saw it as a negative test and then we arrived and I mean here everyone has been you know there's a lot of compliance with mask wearing and so it feels very safe and mm -hmm. um, so it's been really great experience I, I have to say it feels very organized and things are being done really well And the gig itself, in the venue, all the tables were really spaced out two meters apart and everyone had a lot of space. And, um, you know, I think it was done really correctly. And so it's been, yeah, it's, it's been wonderful to, to be able to, to perform in front of an audience live. It feels that's almost great. Because, Yeah, that's great because it's one of the things we are struggling like politically with, with all the responsibles that we are culture generally we are here in, in Spain we're claiming that it's super safe in fact there is no no um, uh, no COVID situations on the cultural world specifically because what you were saying exactly because uh, people is being super scrupulous and everybody is entering uh, orderly to the place keep the distances and this is and this is something that is really happening and sometimes we don't get that feedback from from politicians so it's good that you art is especially coming from the rest of Europe uh, pointing that out so, uh, and it's great but um, Um, so aside from the COVID situation, um, let's talk about your concert and, um, and specifically we would like to know um, what we are going to listen and, and see, in fact, and what's all about this, um, uh, what's, what's around the idea of these cyber songs you, mm -hmm. you pointed on, on your concert? Yeah, so um, for a few years, for quite a while, I've been working with a, a technique that I call text to speech to song. And it essentially uses the text-to-speech um, algorithm software that is in is is uh, you know is innate in, in Google Translate, for example, and in all your translation software programs on computers. It's native to them, and uh, I use those voices, which originally were just recorded, sampled voices of different um, different chunks of different languages. And uh, I've been using those voices um, to create these songs. And what I do is I, I, I work between languages, translating other languages and sort of nonsense becoming um, mm -hmm. becoming uh, sounding as if it's a real language. And um, so I've been playing around with, with this text-to-speech 
for, for a while. And I call it text to speech to song because what happens is when you take some fragments or when I've been taking some of these fragments of these translation texts and playing with them compositionally, and then I'm looping them and repeating them and working with them in studio work, they, they take on a kind of melodic character. They become almost song-like because this is the way the human brain um, starts understanding these patterns. So after exposure for several seconds or minutes to these re- repeated loops, you start to, your brain will make whatever sense it can of what it's hearing. And aside from the fact that it starts to hear sound like melody or a song, it also, you will start to also hear words that make sense to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there are phantoms for me in this kind of technique. I always find that um, depending on what language you speak, your native language, you'll hear words that are relevant to you. So sometimes I call this vocal phantoms as well. Um, and I've been working with these kinds of phantoms for, for several years. But in this particular um, series that I've developed for the Cyber Songs performance, these songs are shorter songs with also with a kind of instrumental sort of jazzy kind of slightly mm-hmm. off kilter character um, and they are um, so yeah they're they're composed using these different voices in various configurations and each one has a sort of little theme of mm-hmm. one of these voices and um, and then I play around in compositionally I play around with whatever with whatever the voice sort of directs me to do in one sense because I I start to combine the voices with different instrumental um, loops and fragments and until I get it kind of structured that's that's nice and so um, a lot there's a lot of repetition there's a lot of looping but the loops are not um, they're not straight loops they're always slightly transforming all the time this is I work a lot with these micro looping transformational mm-hmm. techniques so I'm always shifting things are always slightly shifting within within the loops and um, so you so after exposure for a period of time you start to hear and um, different patterns and that's what I'm kind of that's what really I gravitate towards I'm really interested in in the the, the shifting figure and ground of those mm-hmm. voices and and what the patterns and um, how, how they how you perceive them over time um, and yeah. so that's the audio Mm-hmm. That's um, an amazing thing, yeah. Because I, I'm guessing that that uh, when you work with uh, text to speech, um, which is um, nowadays, I'm guessing it's a synthesized version, uh, or even uh, you talk about the uh, AIs also. And yeah. Work with them. Um, I'm wondering if there is. Uh, for me, it's an interesting to, to get back to the to the the, the natural or the analog, no. Uh, starting from a super digitalized version that tries to Im- imitate or replicate nature at some point. But uh, I guess you, you take that to another level um, that, that transforms specifically um, this kind of speech that at the beginning it was super like robotish, but mm-hmm. now I'm guessing it's super, it's getting more sophisticated as times go by. Yeah, and actually now it's good. That's a good question and a good point because now it's, it's in fact, it's become so good that yeah. it's, it's, uh, it doesn't even present the same kind of, um, interesting artifacts that I used to get from the versions before. So Google, the Google text-to-speech, they're using different algorithms now. They're using neural networks and they're using wave nets. And mm-hmm. in fact, they're, they're so convincing, their tr- translation mm-hmm. results, that it almost really sounds human speech. So what I loved was their, um, their sample-based concatenation um, techniques that they were using in the stage before. They give, when I'm working with them, they give these you, you hear that it's a computer yeah. voice and you hear this, these artifacts, these glitches, mm. these little hiccups, these little things, which are the sort of the, rev- the revealing of the, of the computer. And that's, that's of course really, really fun to work with. Yeah. I, so, guess, I guess, I guess that the new form, I mean, uh, how is it volume, the technology it's like, um, I, I, it might even go beyond the uncanny valley because it, it, in the visual aspect is really easy to spot it and there is a lot of discussion on CGI and stuff like that. But I guess voice can be, because if you can you can check like deep fake videos on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Speech. Oh, yeah. And it's like, it's it's way beyond it, the uncanny valley, I guess. It's, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the deep fakes are, are yeah. insane. They're yeah. insane. I mean, if you, I, I don't know if you've seen the channel of that guy who does the deep fakes call, um, I don't know. He's done all the uh, the Shining videos with Jim Carrey. Have you seen those? Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's an amazing thing, yeah. 
Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. And, and it's so good that it, unless he was saying, unless you're explicitly uh, sort of saying what's happening, you, you will really not know what the difference. It's really incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, sorry. Yeah, I saw something pop up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, wait a second. Sorry. No problem. There we go. Um, let's get the... Um, sorry, I lost my track because... <laughs> of the, the... Yeah, yeah. No, we were finishing uh, with the deep fakes. Oh, uh, yeah. And and about that, um, I, I was wondering because um, one thing is the the e, the EIs and and these uh, artificial voices and the use of looping, and then there is all this um, uh, research of yours, uh, which you already mentioned it about the uh, this idea of the phantoms. That I mm. guess it, it has to do more with deep listening experiences or or immersion in some in some um, in big amount of music. Now it's raining here also. As I you can, can hear that. You might also hear, <laughs> even that we are a bit apart, there is also a storm going on. But I wanted to ask you about the the, um, the phantom, these sonic phantoms, uh, and, and yeah. this concept behind, behind your, your work. Yeah, in fact, I just um, published a book uh, on, on, called Sonic Phantoms. It, it was just published this year, this uh, June, and um, it basically documents uh, the entire uh, body of work that I've developed over and and also contextualization of some of the ideas behind this but essentially um the sonic phantoms describes a project where I am going straight to ideas of um the our particular perceptual um capabilities as human beings so what we gravitate towards what we how we pattern detect how we're sort of built or designed from an evolutionary perspective, to detect patterns, even in things that have no patterns. So it's a classic case of, um, I mean, I link it with ideas like pareidolia and apophenia, which in the visual phenomenon describe how you see shapes in clouds or shapes in, in um, stains on walls, or people see the devil's face in smoke or things like that. So it's about the, how the brain is wired completely to detect all kinds of shapes and patterns in 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 things and anything that's vague and um, or broadband or open in that sense will give you a shifting sense of what comes to the foreground and what is in the background and that when that's shifting it gives you this phantasmatic kind of quality so what i do with all of these phantoms is that i try to i mean this of course i was developing very intuitively for a while before I was able to put some so to clarify what these ideas were happening. But basically, when you you're working with these broadband textures or broadband, um, whether it's visual or, or, or audio material, then you can really play with um, various things like dynamics and looping and, and equalization to bring different patterns to the foreground and to the background. Mm -hmm. So I, I just to give a clear example, I worked with a project called Drawing Phantoms, where I was drawing circles on an amplified um, table. And the repetition of drawing these circles, it has a very granular, noisy sound. Mm -hmm. But when you play with equalization during that performance, over time, and it's a, a 40, 45 minute performance, over time you hear voices. You hear voices coming from the repetition of these, of these um, loops, just like you would in a sense with an um, EVP, you know, where people record um, record EVP tracks and they hear voices in, in, in very, very high noise, um, high noise recordings. So it's playing a lot with this shifting, um, the shifting innate qualities of the human brain. And it's, it really reveals so much about the way we, the way we understand, the way we hear, the way we um, seek patterns and how, how usually we will, we'll find them even when they're not there. So I, I no, sorry, no, continue. continue. No, no, go, go. And um, so the Sonic Phantoms, I have sort of developed into this work of mine, I've developed into four kind of realms. One is where I work with instruments and I call that instrumental phantoms. And then I, I work a lot with preparing those instruments and amplifying them in strange ways and detuning them in weird ways to generate strange artifacts. And the second one is Phantasmus Materialis is working with objects and um, not musical objects, but objects that are sort of like for other purposes and to try and generate also voices or weird sounds from those objects. 
And then I have vo vocal phantoms working with the voice, whether it's synthetic or real. And then the, the final one is natural phantoms working with recordings from, from um, natural or environmental sources. So, and then all together that forms the research for sonic phantoms itself. Mm -hmm. And so, and there's plenty of examples actually, if anyone is interested on my website, there's, I, I made, I created a website, sonicphantoms.com, which, which is, a, accompanies the book. So there's examples, plenty of examples there of, um, of my compositional work playing with those different um, ideas in different ways. This is fascinating. We're going to share it, of course, on, on the chat um, uh, so, so people can, can find it and also the book, uh, which uh, I, will, I'm, I, haven't, I haven't bought it yet, but I'm going to get one of them to, 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 make, to try to, to figure out. I'm guessing that, that the, this idea of the phantoms is it's, it's finally making sense you know, from, from, from the brain perspective or psychological perspective. Is, is this need uh, of humans to make sense to something that uh, is mm -hmm. in front of us? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and to differentiate it with the the, the other textures, for instance, I, I'm guessing it has to do to, with, of, in terms of survivalism as an as exactly a species living in the world. I guess, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like we have to be economical with the way we use our brain resources. You know, we have we have we don't have an infinite um, power source, so we have to we work a lot with prediction i mean i don't know if you are interested in that research about the current research about predictive processing but there's a lot of research over the past few years that has shown quite clearly of how much the brain predicts everything into existence even before you actually have the experience itself so there's so much top down information being actually affecting your experience of the outside world and not as much bottom in coming in affecting it from from the outside in as as we used to think you know yeah. so per perception is certainly super active and we 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 know that now and so i think it's it's that's yeah that's a very very fascinating well, and i know i also thinking that uh, sound specifically it has this this uh, this power of being um of of uh, triggering images on the, on our brain and 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 it's it's kind of uh, kind of uh, easy to trick uh, the mind with with um, with the sound as, as as in the same way we were talking about before AIs and how the the voice it's it's way beyond in Canny Valley sound in generally it's it's uh, an easy trick to 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 transport people to a certain place or state of mind or or mm -hmm. predisposition to something and I'm guessing mm -hmm. this is also uh, boosting um, uh, these these ideas you are seeking on your music and on your research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, actually, I still have to. Um, I'm still not completely happy with the way I can combine visual and sound sources together because it's often very difficult to get that balance right. I mean, I'm I'm I I love certain things happening in chunks in the way that they work combined together, but often the sound itself on its own is more powerful. You know, you close your eyes and you listen and your mind and your brain is, is mm. creating the pictures and the images mm. um, in a way that's not in conflict by the dominant visual source. Yeah. So yeah. that's something that I'm, yeah, I'm trying to explore different ways of, of, um, of playing with this. Uh, in, in, in this next year, I'm going to be doing a lot of explorations with, with um, these, this try this type of visualization of what these things are too because it is difficult to get because the sound as you said there's so much in the sound it's so it's yeah, so powerful exactly. so it's, maybe the visual side it, it, it can be it sometimes works but uh, there is so much going on also between those exactly that exactly if, if you try to go beyond and go to, go seeking for your phantoms it, it's it's even trickier for for our attention span i guess i don't know exactly uh, exactly yeah no that that is absolutely true that's amazing. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Barbara. I, I just want to finish up um, this conversation. It's super interesting, but we are running out of time. Um, but I want to ask you about uh, what, uh, what, what, what are your future plans or what's uh, going on aside from all mm -hmm. this research, or maybe it's, it, you already answered to that question. We always want to know uh, what to expect next from, from, from your body of work. So, well, I'm actually developing now. I, you will see, because I'll send you a video of one of the examples of the videos that I made for one of the cyber songs. So you can also play that on your, I don't know, 
And anyway, one of the things that I'm doing in next year is um, because these videos that I was working with are these silent movies, some of these silent movies from this uh, Segundo de Chimón, this uh, oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Spanish director. Yeah, yeah. And um, because they work with magic and illusions and they're very mm-hmm. playful. So they really, mm-hmm. the, the, the material was, was very interesting to play with. And mm. I, what I'm doing is making some live versions of developing live versions of those. So I basically worked with and edited those films to work with my songs. And then I'm going to working with this mime artist in um, the Netherlands too. And we're going to recreate live versions with projections. And so we were going to work with scale and illusion and projections mm-hmm. to do a little live performances of those. And uh, so that's the, that'll be, I'm going to work on that in February and March. And um, so just continue to see how, where that goes. And, uh, and then with the cyber songs, I'm also um, trying to do a lot of, I'm, I'm trying to find an animator to work with um, to develop these avatars that can actually mm-hmm. sing these songs and to create these uh-huh. kinds of um, mm-hmm. uh, worlds, other worlds, other visual worlds with that work with them, with these voices. Amazing. So mm-hmm. this is my next, my next, next step. Uh, yeah, step. Beautiful. We, we're definitely going to be checking out and, and following your works. And, and yeah, it's super interesting. Thank you very much, uh, Barbara, for being Thank you very us, much. Uh, and connecting from Tenerife, stormy Tenerife today. Um, <laughs> And uh, now uh, we're going to jump right into your concert uh, that, uh, as we said before, it was uh, uh, it happened at the 21st of November uh, in the Keroxen Festival. Uh, thank you very much, Barbara. I, I hope to see you soon and stay safe and I hope you get back home safely and w- with all your gear and stuff. <laughs> thank you very much and thank you for your patience. No, no worries. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.